getting late. We ought to be heading back. Oh, I wonder what's for dinner. Big pot roast, I hope. <laughs> but I'm sure Mom has made something for you, too. Oh, not just for me. I have some friends coming over, remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, I hope she's made enough. Oh, there's always enough on the table when your mother's cooking. <laughs> and she enjoys a challenge. Dad, was that a vegetarian joke? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not all vegetarians. Oh. But, yeah, you're right. Mom always makes sure there's enough. I'm not worried about that. But there is something I've been worrying about. Uh-oh. I'm not sure I want to hear this. Well, it's just what I've been studying in my global agriculture well, now class. Now I'm sure I don't want to hear Aww, this. Aw, Dad, it's just that <laughs> when I take over this farm, I may not be able to grow enough food for everybody. What do you mean, everybody? I mean everyone on the planet. The numbers I've been looking at in class are pretty scary. I'm not sure I want to hear this either. Aww. Okay, numbers, numbers like, like what? How about this one? Nine billion. Right now, we're already struggling to feed everyone on the planet, which is seven billion people. But we're gonna have nine billion people real soon. I hope a couple of them are my grandchildren. <laughs> Dad, I'm being serious. So am I. Okay, okay, nine billion people by the year... By the year 2050. I'm not sure farmers are going to be able to grow enough food for everybody. Well, let an old man tell you something. Oh boy, I'm not sure I wanna hear this. Hey, why is everything in black and white? Wasn't there color back then? You can let your old man talk. <laughs> People started farming about 10,000 years ago. Through all those years, we farmers have always been working to find ways to grow more, keep food on the table. Mm -hmm. When my grandpa started farming, everyone was using organic fertilizer. Organic fertilizers? Yeah, well, back when everyone just called it manure. Well, back in the early 1900s, a couple of German scientists, Haber and Bosch, figured out a way to chemically extract tons of nitrogen from the air. That nitrogen was good for making explosives, and as it turned out, for artificial fertilizer. Plants just went wild for it. About 40 years later, a guy from Iowa, Norman Borlaug, worked to get people all around the world to use that fertilizer, along with advanced breeding techniques and expanded irrigation. That really increased how much each farm could grow. It was also when we started using color film, apparently. Now, don't interrupt. Oh. It took decades, but he figured out how to feed and water plants around the world so that billions would have enough to eat. Dad, I know all about Norman Borlaug's Green Revolution, and it was amazing. It's why we have as much food as we do today. But it's not going to be enough for the extra two billion who are coming our way. Well, we could open more cropland. Well, not really, Dad. That's why the numbers are so scary. If you combine all the cropland in the world, it takes up almost six million square miles. That's as much land as the whole continent of South America. And we use even more land to raise animals. Eleven and a half million square miles for pasture land. If you put all that land together, you'd have a ranch the size of Africa. Really, there's not much good farming land left. So, unless you want to totally bulldoze the rainforest. Well, maybe just a little bit. Well, how many National Geographic specials do those things need? Oh, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Dad, I'm a farmer's daughter. You know I'm not some crazy tree hugger. But tropical forests store carbon dioxide, produce oxygen, purify water, prevent erosion, and are home to thousands of useful plant species. If we just bulldoze the rainforests, we'd have a bunch of new problems on our hands. And it still wouldn't solve the food problem. All right. Two billion more people coming for dinner. It's not enough land. Uh -huh. You're the farmer of the future. What are you going to do about it? Well, there's no one thing. But there are a combination of things we could do and have started. For instance, we can start a new green revolution with the help of tools Norman Borlaug never had. Scientists can now combine satellite imagery with ground-based observations so we can see exactly where crops are being grown. All of that green area is cropland. 
Not only that, but we can tell exactly how much we are growing on each acre. See, some spots, like those in bright pink, are growing a lot of food already. The darker areas, eh, not so much. So? So, we can also figure out how much more each place could grow. Places like Eastern Europe, West Africa, Central America, and East Asia have the potential to produce way more food on the same land. Just as long as they can get enough fertilizer, enough water, and the right breeds of crops. It's sort of what we do with the GPS technology in our farm now. Uh huh. We know how much nitrogen, phosphorus, potash to put where. Right, just on a global scale. And that doesn't mean more fertilizer everywhere, but the right kind and the right amount in the right place. Fertilizer can act like a pollutant when we use too much of it. And we don't have unlimited quantities of it anyway. Obviously, you've inherited some smarts from your old man. <laughs> but you have to be practical, too. Trucking millions of tons of fertilizer across Africa, Asia, and Central America isn't going to be easy or cheap. You're right. A lot of people are trying to figure that out. But there are some other things we could do in the meantime. Do tell, Miss Smarty Pants. Well, we can start with the natural low-tech methods like no-till farming and crop rotation to keep the land healthy. And there's another big one. I'm not sure I want to hear this. We could eat less meat. Yep, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> it's true. Look at North America and Europe and the other mostly red areas. Almost all of the crops grown in these places are used as animal feed. If you look at what happens to the crops grown in Asia, Africa, and South America, the mostly green areas, most of these crops are eaten directly by people. But around the world, people are starting to eat more meat. That means we'll have to use even more land for animal food. You know, I do believe in animal rights. Uh. Animals have a right to eat, too. <laughs> Good one, Dad. But the way we raise animals, it takes almost 11 pounds of feed for a pig to grow one pound of meat. And cows have to eat more than 30 pounds of feed for each pound of beef. Speaking of beef, we're almost home. Mm -hmm. I think I can smell the pot roast from here. Well, it could be that someday crops will be too expensive to produce enough meat for everybody to eat a lot of pot roast or whatever. So you don't have to become a vegetarian, Dad, but maybe just a little less meat. Oh. I got some great recipes. I definitely do not want to hear this. Oh, like delicious grilled zucchini or maybe some juicy tofu burgers. Hey, I bet we could grow even more soybeans in the la, South la, Field. La, 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 I'm not listening. Oh, don't worry, Dad. I'll make sure you have something. After all, we farmers have always made sure there's enough on the table. <laughs> could you pass the pot roast? Sure, Dad. Here. And could you pass the squash soup? There you go. And would you like some of your mother's green beans? They're cooked in bacon fat. <laughs> no thanks, Dad. But how about some of Mom's tofurkey? No thanks. Want some beef gravy? <laughs> no thanks, Dad. Will you two stop it? Honestly. 